period. The spirit, excuse me, that quickeneth, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so that clears up the whole thing. That shows you a very plain. Nicodemus just couldn't get it. And so the Lord showed him, well, you got to have two births. You have to have a spiritual birth. You have to have a physical birth. And so we, we have that explained here again. And uh, <clears throat> the Lord making it very plain. Now, uh, one, one thing about being born again, Ephesians. I'm just going to turn there quick and read a verse out of Ephesians 4. Excuse me, Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You. He's quickened you. Uh, and so that's the second birth. He's made you alive spiritually. Now so you can worship and adore and love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 uh, very familiar verse, 1 Corinthians 2, and verse uh, 14 there. Most of you could probably quote this, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And then it goes on, the verse I quoted or said earlier, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Uh, so here, the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit. All he can receive is physical things, and physical things relating to physics, to the world, to a physical world. Uh, the Spirit of God is the one that will give you the understanding of His Word and relating spiritual things to you. Uh, look at uh, Hebrews Chapter 4, did I already, I already read that, that's okay, so don't, you don't have to go there again. Uh, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, the word of God, that's this book we have right here in our, our hands, the King James Bible. It's the word of God, and we use it for his glory, and he will teach you through it if you'll just read it and study it and look at it and use it for his glory. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, let's see, we were in 1 Peter 2 there. And uh, verse 5 has a verse there in 1 Peter 2, 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So through Jesus Christ, we can give spiritual gifts because we have spiritual birth. And we are living two lives, the spirit and the flesh. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Look at Revelation. You want to know, again, who Jesus Christ is? Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Great chapter of the Word of God. Um, chapter 19. The Alleluia chapter. Things that people or the saints in glory are shouting hallelujah for as they unfold in, his, in history to come. <laughs> his story that's coming. Uh, in verse... Um, verse 13. Talking about Jesus Christ, he called faithful and true. Uh, in in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. That's the way God is. He's a righteous judge. He does it in righteousness. Uh, it describes him, verse 12, there also his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So you see, Jesus Christ is the living Word. He is the Word of God. Uh, when the Word was spoken, creation came. The Word, Jesus Christ, He speaks uh, from God. 
And John, he covered that in John too with his disciples, that he was the word. And if you see me, you see the Father. If you believe in me, you believe in the Father. If you don't believe in me, you don't have any part of the Father. That's what he kept telling the Pharisees and the scribes and all the unbelievers, the people that were following their own religion. Uh, 1 John. 1 John 1. Begin in verse 1. That which was formed from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Jesus Christ becoming man, taking on flesh, incarnate. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And so together, all believers can have that fellowship. When you're out uh, somewhere and you're, you're down and out and somebody comes to you and, and reads your hat or reads your track or or hands you a track or something, and you get a chance to talk, speak with them, uh, all of a sudden, when you find out that they've been born again, and you've been born again, you have something to talk about. Right. It doesn't make any difference what the world's doing and how the world's going. Because this is spiritual, it's not of the flesh. It's not of the world. And so that's the way it is, and what a great blessing it is to us. Uh, Romans 9. Romans 9, and verse, um, verse 17, another thing that the scripture does. You know, is the scripture really alive? Is it really doing anything? Uh, who was back there in the Old Testament, all those books and the writings in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and so forth? Uh, that was the angel of the Lord. That was Jesus Christ, the uh, uh, theophany of Jesus Christ. And he was there with them. Uh, the stone that followed them and gave him water was Jesus Christ in the, in the set 40 years of wandering. Uh, but here in chapter 9 of Romans, uh, verse 17, the word of God says, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh. Uh, I thought that Moses and his Aaron were speaking to Pharaoh. It was the scripture that was speaking to Pharaoh. The scripture, uh, Jesus Christ, the word of God, uh, was saying unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. <laughs> That's what Jesus Christ used Pharaoh for. That his name, that Jesus Christ's name would be throughout the world, would be uh, given, so they'd show his power. Uh, the scripture said that to Pharaoh, not Moses or Aaron. They were messengers, true. Uh, but it was the scripture, Jesus Christ, telling them what to do and what to say there. Um, <clears throat> So Jesus Christ is the living word of God. He is uh, the word. And uh, again, if any man love me, he'll keep my words. You gonna keep his words or don't you love him that much? Uh, one, one more, Galatians 3. Galatians 3. And verse 8, Galatians 3, 8, there. <clears throat> Galatians 3, 8 says, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. And that's something foreknowledge. Scripture was preaching. The scripture was speaking the scripture before the gospel. 
spoke to Abraham. Uh, so the word of God, Jesus Christ, appeared to, to him, the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, appeared to Abraham there and spoke with him on the plains and uh, it preached. So look at verse 20, I think it's 22, right? Uh, verse 22 of Galatians 3, but the scripture hath concluded. So how can a book conclude something in your life? <laughs> the scripture does, because the scripture's alive. It's Jesus Christ. The scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Whoa. Be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Be saved. Repent and believe. Uh, and so uh, before that, it says in verse 23 there, before faith came, we were kept under the law. But then faith came, and Jesus Christ was revealed, because he is the word of God. <clears throat> so let's go on now and look at, you must eat and drink the word of God. We saw that to, uh, in Peter, to, uh, that we should enjoy the sincere milk of the word, uh, the pure milk of the word. Look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And verse 4. <laughs> this is what the Lord is teaching here about uh, in chapter 4 of Matthew, of course, is where the devil was tempting the Lord Jesus Christ. And so how did the Lord Jesus Christ answered the devil when he tempted him to make uh, bread out of the stones. In verse 4 he says, He answered and said, It is written, the word of God, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. What are you going to live by then? By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You take every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God and try to live by it? That's what you're expected to do. If you love me, keep my words. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. Pretty cut and dried. Uh, <clears throat> also in, um, well, look at Job 23, 12. Here's a man that uh, went through it. Job, look at 23. Job 23, verse 12. How did Job feel when after all he's going through, all the things that he's lost everything, his family, and his life, his health, and he says, uh, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Talk about a spiritual feast. Uh, he certainly wasn't having a physical feast, not in his state that he was in. Uh, but here he kept, he said, I keep your commandments. I esteem your words, the words of your mouth more than my necessary food. Uh, do we do that? Have you ever... Um, gone long enough to where you were really hungry and, and, uh, and then you said let's read a chapter of the Bible oh it's sweet as honey a honeycomb amen uh, so uh, Jeremiah 15 Jeremiah 15 and Jeremiah 15 and verse 16, Here's Jeremiah, he didn't have much to laugh about, but here he sure knew what to do. Thy words were found, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. What meant more to him than getting through to the people? He was called by God's name. The words were found, his words, God's words. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. Because he's called by the Lord God of hosts. If you're saved, born again, 
then the word ought to be sweet and joyful and rejoicing in your heart. <clears throat> Revelation 10. Where are you out turning through the, through the uh, book? Uh, we had a guy here passed on now, but he used to be here in church, and he, he called me the flipper. I remember when I first came here uh, 20 years ago. He said, you're flipping here and you're flipping there. You're flipping all over the scriptures. <laughs> that was uh, Gary Pongrack. <laughs> yep. In uh, chapter 10 of Revelation, here John uh, is writing all these things down that he's told to write. And then in verse 9 of chapter 10 there in Revelation, he says, I went unto the angel and said unto him, here's the angel with the little book, uh, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And so uh, there's some, some bitterness. I mean, we see the things that are coming and we see judgment coming and that, that can be bitter, but I'll tell you what, the words are sweet. Aren't you glad you know how you're going to escape that judgment? Aren't you glad you know how you're going to escape the wrath of God? Uh, it's all from the book. And so the words are sweet. Eat them up. Eat them up. Uh, get into the word and uh, study it. Make it yours. Uh, again, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Words. Words are important. You know, we had a lot of Bible translators and, and revisers and things over the, my lifetime uh, that have said, well, it's not the words. That's what they say. It's not the words. It's just the thought that matters. And so that's what many religious groups and uh, supposed Christian churches are living by today. They're living by just the thoughts that they want to do. That's what the Jews do. They got the Talmud that they go by. That's man's writing of what God, of their thought, of the way God should have said it, really. And so it's just like the Quran. The Quran, the Talmud, or the, uh, have so many similarities, and, and they're written by men for their religious system. Instead of just going to the book and the original scriptures, uh, they are tied up in that stuff. Uh, nonsense. Uh, Look at Ezekiel, let's see. Yeah, look at Ezekiel 2. Right after Lamentations of Jeremiah. Ezekiel 2. Let's begin in verse 8 here. <clears throat> Eat the word of God. By the way, there's some verses here that uh, really helped thrust me into the ministry as you're being able to help out in the ministry. Uh, verse 6 there is one of them that I was given by a pastor to uh, be a helper for. To, he says, Thou son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed. Uh, he's calling the, the people here scorpions and briars and all this, this kind of stuff. People that are going to abuse you if they can. Uh, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Talking about Israel. Uh, Ezekiel, and then verse 7, Thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, his hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was writing, written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. Now, he wasn't telling him to take that scroll, the paper and the parchment, whatever it's made of, and stuff it in his mouth, was he? 
It's a spiritual application. It's to use that word and put it in your heart and then go and spread the word and tell people about what I have for you to say. Now, again, in chapter, uh, chapter 3 here of Ezekiel, uh, verse 2, So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. Uh, that's what a, a pastor is called to do. Is he's supposed to give forth the word for instruction, correction, and righteousness, uh, instruction, and righteousness, and uh, He's to do it as the Lord. The Lord is the head of the church. See, I'm not the head of this church. I'm just a, a man here that is being used of the Lord for this purpose. And, uh, and that can change overnight. I mean, you don't know. It's up to the Lord. It's his church. Uh, here. So we see that you need to eat the word of God, just like the prophets ate the word of God. Eat it up. And you take the scripture. Then take it and eat it. And I think I did a message one time years ago, just after you eat it, digest it. See, we can get a couple hours of, of preaching or a couple hours of teaching, and we can get a couple hours of Bible reading, and, and uh, then what are you going to do with it? You need to digest it and apply it uh, to your life. If a man love me, he will keep my words. Don't let them slip. Uh, again, Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, this is the, uh, where we don't, don't, we don't stay on the milk. We get, get busy and use the word of God. Before you know it, why we'll be uh, having a real feast of meat. We'll get into the meat. Uh, chapter 5 and verse 13. For everyone that useth milk, well, <laughs> let me, verse 12 will, will uh, help you. Let's go to 12. Verse 12, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Of course, oracles is words, uh, oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So you're back to 1 Peter there where it's talking about get on the pure milk of the word and grow thereby. But once you grow, you get into the meat. And so he says, uh, uh, you have need of milk again. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And so how do you get that strong meat? How do you get to that age? And how do you grow up? You use the word of God. You get out there and take it and use it for his glory. And uh, uh, that's not talking about the age, uh, physical age, it's talking spiritually. Uh, how, how have you grown spiritually since you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and were baptized and then have been fellowshipping with churches that the Lord has placed you in? Uh, so it's by who by reason of use have their senses exercised. You want to get exercised, uh, it's like, uh, you know, the baby's got to get his jaw exercised so he can start eating meat. Got to get those teeth in there and stuff. And, uh, you, you, uh, and then, you can, then he can get up to the meat and he can start chewing it. Uh, it's in the word of God. You get the milk and then pretty soon you need to use the word of God and you need to start digesting it, start eating it and getting into the meat, using it. Using it is what it says here in verse 14. That's how you grow by. Uh, <clears throat> well, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Second Timothy 4.
Second Timothy 4. <clears throat> I was uh, going to look at 1 Peter 5 also and get that in my other hand. Uh, 1 Peter 5, talking about the Word of God, about using it, what you're supposed to do with it. Uh, I'm just going to read this out of uh, 1 Peter 5 while I'm there. Feed the flock of God. This is talking to the elders. Uh, feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not of, for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And so that's what we use. We use the word. That's what uh, God wants the elders, pastors, preachers, uh, you know, anybody, any of you that go out preaching to your neighbors, uh, letting them know about it. Uh, God will use that for his glory if you'll just do what he wants you to do. 2 Timothy 4, look at, begin verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead as his appearing and his kingdom. Okay, what's he charging Timothy with here? Now I understand Timothy was a, what you'd call a preacher boy, I guess. Uh, he was taught under Paul. Uh, but we are, we're all being taught things that we need to do. And uh, here he says, preach the word. What else are you going to preach? You're going to preach about the, you know, <laughs> there, there's so many things can get us sidetracked in the world. I mean, I could have done, I could have done two hours this morning on what's happening in Canada. It says, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Doesn't, doesn't make if if people like it or if people don't like it, you just, whether it's in season or out of season, whatever's right before the Lord, you do. Reprove, rebuke. Uh, oh, but Lord, I might, people might leave the church if I reprove and rebuke too, too much. So I better be careful what I say. Uh, well, the uh, Lord just says do it. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh, use the doctrine, use the teaching of God's word. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Uh, so that's the age we're in today where uh, so many people want to go their own way. They want to hear their own thing. They don't want to hear from God. They don't want to hear the word of God, uh, which is Jesus Christ and the Son of God, his preaching, his teaching, his doctrine, uh, it's right here in the Word. So we need to major on the Word of God. Uh, we don't turn aside from that. Uh, and that's why, uh, well, expository preaching, you don't get lost into uh, all the, the other things of the world as much. And so it's good to do that. Or like in these cases with certain things where uh, we can hardly get an hour worth of Scripture in here. Uh, we always go over time, it seems. But that's fine. This is what we need. We need God's word. And so uh, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. You know, uh, verse in 2 Timothy 3, uh, verse 15, uh, well, these verses here, uh, well, verse 13 says, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And before that, it says that all that li will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Uh, wow, <laughs> all these things, uh, you know, continue thou, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, uh, that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Now, uh, Timothy was raised on the Scriptures, and, uh, and so... He's talking to him specifically, but and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, that is that verse along with Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's my testimony of salvation. Those two verses, I knew them from a child. From the time I was old enough to listen while well, I was learning those things. And I learned those too. And I remember when I was about nine years old and a tragedy happened there. My neighbor, my best friend, got, uh, got killed in a bike accident, bike auto accident. And, uh, and how the Lord used those verses says, you know the way of salvation. 
believe it. I did, and I trusted him. Received Jesus Christ. And uh, he's gotten me through everything, that and everything else today. So we just need to trust his word. We need to hear his word. We have a spiritual feast here. We have the, uh, the word of God being Jesus Christ. You've got to eat and drink God's word. You've got to digest it. You just need to keep on with the word of God. Remember, separate spiritual and physical things so we don't get, get uh, messed up like the scribes and Pharisees and even the disciples did under the Lord's teaching and say, Lord, no, no, that won't work. You know, and all it, like his disciples said, many went back and never followed him after that. Uh, so uh, the Lord is teaching good spiritual truth, but they were trying to apply it physically. You can't do that. You must be born again. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can be born again by the word of God, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has made the uh, full payment for the sins of the whole world. And Lord, you've offered, you've offered to save anyone that will come uh, repenting and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for that wonderful gift of salvation. We can't do it in the flesh, Lord. The flesh can't get us anywhere but into trouble. Uh, but spiritually, we can be born again. Thank you, Lord. And then adopting us into your family. Thank you, Lord, for all the things to come for the believer. And we love you. Amen. If you love him, keep his words. Let's take our songbooks and close with 187 today. 187. Before we close, any questions, comments, anything you have? A lot came, I'm sure there's a lot of familiar scripture. Go ahead, Dick. Hebrews 4.12. That kind of sums it up for me. I, I, after a message, I like the message. I, I cannot digest all of it as quickly as I once possibly could. I can't flip over to it. Yeah. Something, yeah. something that sticks, I, I say, I God gave me that. Yeah. That was my verse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as the Lord teach, speaks to your heart, yeah. just obey him. Listen to his words. Amen. Apply it. Okay, 187, if you're able to stand, and stand and walk. Sing this in closing.
Pray for them as they travel. Anyone else going to be traveling this spring yet? This spring? Well, it's not spring, is it? It will be down there, <laughs> hopefully. So, uh, okay, thank you for that update. Um, always needs, boy, it's, it's been rough and with the storms coming through. <laughs> the one Wednesday is supposed to sweep through ahead of you, hopefully, huh? So we'll see. Uh, okay, anything else? Okay, Brother Dick, go ahead and thank the Lord. Father, we thank you again, Lord, for your word. Your word, Lord God, is quick and powerful. Lord, as we look into it, we're, uh, the world we're living in today, sometimes it seems a little rough what's going on, but you're in charge of all things, and you're aware of it, aware of everything that goes on. Lord, we have that great hope. And Lord, we're looking forward to your coming, but until then, help us to be faithful and get into your word of God and realize that we're not alone. Amen. Amen. Okay, God bless you. We'll have refreshments here shortly. And uh, I need to meet with uh, Dick and Phyllis and you two, us two, uh, up here. If we could just for a moment, I just need to talk to you about something. And uh, then we'll go on. So go ahead and, and get things set up back there and get ready to go. And then we'll get back there.